autonomous vehicles are mostly defined by the software that operates them, even more so than the computers or sensors that are on them. You know, fundamentally, in the limit, you know, we see you know, sensors mainly becoming cameras, and you know, a, a computer that's watching a camera and then trying to you know, recognize the images it sees is a very difficult software problem. And today, that's where you know, at Tesla, we have a large team of software developers you know, focused on you know, image recognition and, and understanding those, those aspects, and also how to control the vehicle appropriately based on that. And I think it's ultimately inevitable that we'll see you know, autonomy inc playing an increasing role in, in the transport sector. You know, the, the trends here are irreversible. We're not going to see them slow down or stop. And full autonomy ultimately will be you know, achievable from a hardware capability point of view much sooner than most people expect, in a matter of years, not decades. And the way that uh, we see this playing out in the regulatory market and in the, the user space is going to be driven mainly by safety. I think that will be the main you know, application that, that makes this uh, accessible and makes this uh, something that uh, is regulated into certain markets. You know, it's a simple fact that we can measure today that autonomous systems, you know, running on computer control with good sensor input are, are much safer, more repeatable and safer than a human driver. And as we achieve more and more, you know, miles and more and more data that can demonstrate this with increasing, you know, levels of proof, I think we'll see more and more acceptance and ease of adopting autonomous vehicle standards and regulations. This is also driving a whole series of new business models. And the innovation around the autonomous vehicle space is phenomenal. You know, I'm based in San Francisco in the Silicon Valley in California. And you, know, you can go not more than maybe two or three miles in Silicon Valley and encounter some new startup company that's working on an autonomous vehicle, software related to that, or some part of the ecosystem about uh, autonomy. It's a pretty exciting time. And, and finally, I think we're going to see you know, a, a, an increasing, you know, increasing level of, of uh, growth in these upstart companies. You know, Tesla is an early example of success in this industry, but you know, many other companies are following Tesla. There's hundreds, literally thousands of other startup companies um, working on innovation transport. And the nature of a lot of the technology of these new problems is not the same as the nature of the technology that was addressed in many cases by large you know, OEMs. Maybe Bombardier is an exception, having an early history in electrification. But in many cases, you know, large car companies or truck companies are not focused on software. They're not focused on sensors or batteries. And this gives an, an opportunity for innovation with new companies and new entrants you know, to play on a bit more of a level playing field than there ever was in the past. And you know, overall, you know, our future vision is that ultimately, all ground vehicles are going to migrate toward electric. You know, this is perhaps a controversial viewpoint among some different industries, but you know, the trends we see in energy storage, fuel cost, environmental pressures, you know, more or less make this inevitable. If we want to achieve the CO2 goals that we have as a, as a global society, we, we have to do this. And we also have to find ways to power this with sustainable energy. You know, this is the other critical piece of e-mobility, is, is where does the energy come from? And the two need to be linked, I think, in, in their thinking.